With the Yusuko December contest coming up pretty shortly, there's one important thing that you should do to prepare them. Most people usually skip over. And this is contest strategy. And you may think that contest strategy is unimportant, but every single year I've been to Yusuko camp, they have a dedicated lecture just for contest strategy. I mean, think about it. They have lectures on, on different topics and a few things here and there, and they have a lecture just for contest strategy. And the whole team, which are Yusuko campers who have come back more than one time, don't even get the lectures on the different algorithms and data structures. They only get one lecture about competition, and that is on content strategy. So clearly, the coaches think that content strategy is one of the most important things, and myself as a coach also believes that. And I've seen content strategy take people's scores from 233 and so forth to 833. Right? You could do some crazy things with content strategy, so it's really important that you learn it and you learn how to improve your content strategy so you can be ready for the upcoming December contest. So one of the most important things you can do is keep a contest log. And what that's going to look like is let's say your contest starts and it's going to occur, like this is even a four hour contest. So we're going to make a contest log that has increments for every 15 minute period. And so on so this is what our contest log is going to look like. And at every 15 minute period, we're going to stop and write down what we did for the previous 15 minutes. This might be read all problems, think about P2. It's pretty short. This might be think about P2. Not even the word about, just think P2. Here it might be code P2 code slash debug, and so on and so forth. Just a couple phrases, words here and there. Now, many times when people do this, they're like, oh, I can't do this for you, I'm gonna lose my focus. But the thing is, it's really essential that you do this, because a couple words won't really lose your focus that much. And what it will do is, you might notice you're working on the same problem for an hour and a half, you might be like, oh, debug, P2, and you're like, wait a second. I've been working on this for a long time. But I'm almost so, I'm so close. I'm so close. Spend more time on it. And that's what happens like, when you're debugging. But come on, I'm so close. I'm so close. I'm, I'm almost got it. And then you just lose an hour and a half in two hours. And you don't even know about it. I can tell you after the contest, you spent two hours in that. You wouldn't even believe me if you don't keep the contest slow. It's possible that you're leaking a lot. It's actually very likely that you're leaking a lot of time debugging problems. And you don't even think about it. Because like it's a contest, you're excited, you don't realize how long you're spending on this. So keeping a contest log will make you aware of this and you can maybe cut it off like here or something and get 30 minutes back. Now, the thing about cutting it off here is you can always come back to that problem later. Right? The contest lens isn't shrinking. So let's give you, this will just give you the opportunity to work on other problems and maybe get partial credit on those. Maybe one of those problems is easier to code, easier to debug, easier to fix. You can come back and spend the 30 minutes later. Your has not left your contest. You simply decided that you'll do it later. And later you can decide, is this the best 30 minutes back to debugging P2 or working on a different problem? You might also find, and this is a very common thing, that if you switch, if you work on problem one, then problem two, then back to debugging problem one, you're going to come up with some new insight for problem one usually. And that's because when you're working on that, when you switch back and forth, your brain has had some time to like step away from it and come back. So you're not very like, used to it. So you get like, not really a fresh pair of eyes, but like more fresh than it was before. And I found it's very common that the student spends like an hour and a half trying to debug a problem, can't get it, goes back to a different problem for 30 minutes, finishes that problem. Then the next 15 minutes of debugging the first problem, they get it. And that's because that fresh pair of eyes, or like the fresh, this fresh er sight, really helps you out. Now, personally, I recommend at the start of the contest, spend no more than 30 minutes code slash debugging any problem. And that's because what you want to do is you want to make sure you have time to code every single problem and get partial to every single problem. Now this is different from Platinum. So right now I'm talking about bronze, silver, and gold, where you need to get two and a half problems, usually more than two, but also one and a half, but it's usually two to two and a half problems to advance. So you need some partials on every single problem. So you want to make sure that you spend no more than 30 minutes coding it, and you can come back to it after you spend 30 minutes on every single problem. But at first, before you've done all three problems, you spend no more than 30 minutes coding. And so what we want to do is you want to cut off 
problem to here after we spend 30 minutes coding and work on a different problem. So you work on P1, P1, maybe P3, and then we can come back to P2 if we choose to. But at this point in time, we have a better sense of the contest, and we can decide if we want to work on P2, P3, or P1. Right? There's many different problems that we can choose to work on. My P, I mean problem. Problem is problem one, problem three, problem two. Okay. I don't think for the strategies, when you start out, start out by reading all the problems. Sometimes you read a problem and you decide, oh, I have to do this one. You decide to code it, resist that temptation for just a second, spend a minute reading the other two problems. And the reason is you might think you find an easy problem that you know how to solve. But in reality, if any problem you know how to do it, you're going to think it's easy. There might be an easier problem than a problem that shows up. And maybe your approach with that first problem that you thought was easy, I thought that approach was incorrect. You realize that after thinking about it for like 10 minutes more, right? 10 minutes later, you realize, oh, it's not going to work. Then what do you do? That's why it's important to have these other problems that you've already read that you can like go back to. So you want to have to write all your problems so it's easier for you to rank them from easiest to hardest. How about reading all your problems? Another thing I would say is when you do your contest log, so we have this contest log, and we talked about the benefits of making sure that you don't spend too much time coding one problem in contest, or putting one problem in contest. But after the contest is over, you then get a chance to reflect on your contest log and be like, all right, after the contest is over, you read the whole solution, you're like, oh shoot, if I wanted to spend 45 more minutes on a problem, I could have gotten it, or just 10 more minutes, I would have gotten it. Because like, oh, this is so easy, I just, I just spent long enough on it. So then you can go back and analyze, where did I go wrong? Where did my time get wasted? What went wrong that wasn't the case? Now obviously, if you don't know how to code or implement all the problems, you don't know how to solve all the problems, you're not going to get the points. But if you could get it with the solution, you just miss something. That you don't want to miss. The idea of a good contest strategy is that every single problem that you can solve, every single point that you can get, you do get in contest. That's the idea of a good contest strategy. If there's a point that you don't know how to do, you're never going to get that, and that's okay. Good contest strategy means that whatever points you can get, you will get. And you're going to practice in other ways so that you can get more and more points, but contest strategy is with the points you can get in contest and make sure that you do get them. So after contest, you analyze what went wrong. And then you have a new plan. And you're going to stick to that plan for your next contest. Because here's the thing, and this is my first contest log. And then I just do this a second contest. And then make another contest log. Without doing any analysis in the middle. They're probably going to look very similar, almost identical. And any mistake you had made on the first one, if you hadn't realized it was a mistake, you hadn't even noticed the mistake, you're going to make the same mistake on the second one. So it's basically the same as only doing one practice contest and not two. Don't do that. It's just a waste of your time to do the second one if you don't analyze what your mistakes are and how you're going to fix them. So after every contest, think about. Look at your contest log and improve upon it. Now, when I work with some of my students, after they do a contest log, I have them bring it to me or another coach. We look at it, we make some changes, and then I see their contest jump. Their contest scores jump to the next contest usually, a big percentage of the time. However, if I see a student who just does a bunch of contest logs and doesn't bring it to a coach, now they're supposed to. Sometimes they just don't. And their scores basically remain the same, and they're so confused. And it's like, of course, it remains the same. The second practice contest doesn't even matter if you're making the exact same mistakes you made in the first one. If you haven't realized you're making a mistake, you're not going to be able to fix it. So, that's why it's super important. After every single contest you do, look over your contest log. If you have a coach or mentor, have them look at it too. Have them give you comments on it too. Because the thing is, it just takes five minutes for them to give you comments. Or five minutes to look over it yourself. And that five minutes can really help you make a better plan for the next contest. They can really shoot your score. It's the most effective five minutes of study you can get in terms of score improvement. So make sure that you make improvements between your contests. Now, before the contest coming up, how many practice contests should you do? Again, for each practice contest, you should be making a contest log and making improvements between each contest, if you need each log, and between each practice contest. So I think it's pretty reasonable to do between three and five, depending on how much time you have for the next contest. And that's pretty reasonable. You want to make your practice contest for the most recent year. So last year's contest is the best way for you to do it. If you've taken those already, if you've seen the problems, then go back to another year. So this way you'll have good contests to work on. Now, one more thing. 
in context, it's still important that you keep a context log. How long does it really take you to write a couple words here and there? Less than three minutes in the entire contest. And that less than three minutes can really make a big improvement in making sure you don't spend an hour and a half developing a problem that you're not going to get anyways. Maybe you do get it after an hour and a half, but it's not worth it because you could have gotten two other problems instead. Okay, now I want to give some tips for Platinum 2 because I really think that for Platinum, you don't really need to solve two problems. Um, one and a half is about correct, but you simply get partial, partial scores in that one and a half. So at the beginning, you just want to read all your problems and just pick which ones you think you can get the most partial from. So read the partial scoring, now they always have partial scoring in Musico, and try to solve each of the subtasks. See how many partials you can get. Now, although you only need one and a half, I still highly, highly recommend you do all three. And the reason is, you might be able to get, say, like 75% on one, 25% on the other, and 25% on the other. And this is a pretty good score, right? Maybe you even get 100% on one, 33% on the other, and like, but any easy subtask that you can get that adds to your score will really increase your score, making you to camp. So that's why it's important to not miss the easy partials on any of the problems. Alright, the last thing I want to say for call strategy is in the last 30 to 45 minutes, and it could be up to an hour and a half depending on how much you've coded already, you want to spend it coding up all the partials that you know you can solve but you haven't implemented. And again, how much time you spend on it depends on how many partials you have left to code. So you don't want to be coding the partials at the beginning. At the beginning, you only want to be coding full solves. Again, this is for silver, bronze, and gold. At the beginning, you only want to be coding full solves. And at the end, just code up the partials you have left. For platinum, it's okay to code up partials earlier than the thing. Because as we talked about, right, this, is a, this is actually a great score. So this is actually a pretty wonderful score. It's just partial. So whenever you think you can get a high number of partials, just code it up. And of course, you still want to save time at the end, even for platinum, to code up any remaining partials you missed. So that's it for contest strategy. Be sure to work on it and improve your contest strategy before the upcoming December contest. I'll see you next video later. Bye.